How to Make the Wood Slice Scarecrow. This is a Pinterest inspired by Keeper of the Cheerios. First, how to make scarecrow hat. We're gonna start off repurposing some ribbon spools, some craft paper along with your scissors and your fabric of choice. An eight by eight inch square is what you'll need. If you start off with a larger spool, remove the bottom circle, which is about four and a half diameter and take the craft paper or any kind of paper sack or bag and you can build out your form. This is if you opt to use the ribbon spool and it works much better because your form is there. It's a matter of adding the details. So let's create the rim by attaching the two and a half inch ribbon spool to the larger circle again. And cover the top is optional. This is not necessary, and I made this step before I realized, oh, wait a minute, I gotta build up the top. Unless you plan on doing your scarecrow with some of like corn husk or raffe or something coming out of the top of it. So I created three different size cardboard rounds to build up the hat, and I'm gluing them to the top here. Once again, this is optional if you decide to make this particular flop hat. You'll stretch your fabric out over the top of it. And as we create this, we pretty much wanna pretend we've got four corners. So you'll glue and attach your fabric in four places around the outer perimeter to form your hat. So the scarecrow hat starts coming together and I chose burlap because that's suitable for a scarecrow. And this is really, really easy. So <clears throat> to create pleats in that hat, it's easier once you do the four corners per se. And then when you start putting those together, they'll automatically pleat. So you wanna glue the other four pleats down. And just take your time and go through there and make sure that the glue has adhered. I could have used a larger piece of fabric, but I gave you the exact measurement because I built up the top of mine. So it's looking really good. So let's keep going. Next, we wanna flip it over and trim off the corners of our fabric, giving it a more round. And since we need more fabric to complete it, we're now going to create the brim. So using the actual spool form that I had, I'm going to go one half inch wider outer diameter to create what I need to fit the brim of my hat. Now to keep your burlap from raveling, if you'll remove the thread before you cut it, you will prevent yourself from raveling. So you'll go ahead and cut that. Now we can go ahead and get that out of our way and trace the center circle that's going to fit around our scarecrow's hat. So you'll go ahead and cut this circle out and this will allow it to fit better. So turn it upside down so you don't see the magic marker. And now we've got that into place. So let's attach it. When you glue it, glue it next to the form. As you can see me pressing down with my fingers, you want to glue that as close to your round form of your ribbon spool per se, in order to make sure that the brim coverage is attached. Now one half inch is what we need overhanging from the extension of our outer brim. So once again, remove the threads from your burlap to create it, this canal and go all the way around all four corners so that when you trim this off, you'll not have any ravel and it'll be easier to work with. So this is the last one. Now take your scissors and cut off any difference that's excess. Yes, this looks good. So let's go ahead and turn this over and where we had our marker, we can now trim off the corners. That's looking pretty good. Now we've got to create a fringe edge. So grab you some glue, some tacky glue, wood glue, or Elmer's glue. 
and we see we're forming it up we can see where the glue's at and this is just working as a fray check so that when we begin to make our fringe we're not going to lose any of our fabric that looks pretty good so start removing some fibers and i'm going to speed this up and basically what's loose there and just do this fringe edge until you're content with it now we need to let it set aside to dry and it's looking really good so to create the flap or the flop of the scarecrow hat we're going to fold it together and remove that cardboard piece round that we had there so now we get this floppy effect and this indention i'm removing this g-twine that was that was a uh oh and i didn't want it so after we paint we'll finish our hat so let's paint the scarecrow now at this point the wood slice has been smoothed off and has been prepared with a sealer of Mod Podge. So I'm finding the center. That's really, really important. We've got to tint the face. So to do that, I'm gonna pick a brown and my water, and I'm gonna water it down. It's just one touch of my brush into a brown color and make it very, very watery because this is just to be a tint on the wood slice to create our wood slice scarecrow. And you want to stay one inch from the outer edge. Now I'm going back with something a little lighter. I need the scarecrow face to be a little bit lighter. This is to be a tint. So I'm using a mineral, which is between a gray and a silver. And grab your black paint marker. This is my Sharpie fine point. Creating the face by using the peace sign. The peace sign is equally really easy to use because you got two fingers, two eyes, and the same distance between the eyes and the nose and the nose and the mouth. So once you create your eyes, you can then position your nose and the mouth much easier. Now the eyes here are kind of on a slant and it's a teardrop. It looks like a teardrop and you're turning it sideways at an angle. So I've got this drawn up really close so that you can paint along with me. So here is a freeze frame of the eyes. Next, we need to make the eyes more apparent. So once again, making a teardrop within the teardrop and coloring it in. You will do both the left and the right eye the very same way. With the wood slice, Scarecrow, you will find that when you're using your paint marker, you'll have to go over it a couple of times. And mine was still damp. I had not let it dry completely. I could feel the dampness in the wood. And therefore, the paint needed to be layered. And it shows up better. So here's a freeze frame. And now, let's go ahead and put some lines underneath the eyes. And this will be such as the cheeks. And don't forget those eyelashes. That's what makes it really special. So let's create the scarecrow's mouth on our wood slice. And there is no perfection. It is simply your own critique and ability. Simply just put some lines as though those are stitches to make his mouth. And where the center of his smile is, I didn't put any stitches at all. Here's a freeze frame of what we got. Now let's put a little more accent up top for his eyebrows. And as you can see, I go back two or three times to make sure that the marker, paint marker, sinks in. Now we can create our Wood Slice Scarecrow's nose. And when you create this triangle, it can be a little more square at the top and rounded at the bottom. Use your red paint marker, or maybe you have a melon or a peach. 
even an orange would be great to create the scarecrow's nose. I elected red because of my inspirational piece by Keeper of the Cheerios Scarecrow on a wood slice. And I really liked the depth of the one she done. Now take the blue. I elected to make my scarecrow's eyes blue. And you'll stay underneath the black of the teardrop eyes. Now we can put more detail to it. It's now ready to apply white paint. And in order to keep this from smearing and running, make sure that you let it dry a moment or two since the paint markers, grow, they dry really fast. And then go back and put a second layer of the white. And this will really, truly draw those eyes. And now we have this beautiful wood slice scarecrow face. And here is a freeze frame of the face. You can always pause this video if you need to take your time and do the details one step at a time. So let's put some stitches upon his nose for his little patch nose. And just now you can go back and trace it more so to accentuate it and detail it with black. Oh, he is handsome. I truly am in love with my wood lice scarecrow. And the wood slice scarecrow blue eyes, is, you could do green, you could do brown, anything to make those eyes pop, but the blue just really set him off. And as I said, go back and put a second layer of your colors so that way it really pops and stands out. And as this dries and sets in, it will have that rustic look. Now to make sure that my paint markers are dry, I used my heat gun. And always, always sign your work. You'll never regret it. And don't ever be ashamed of anything you've made or painted. Put a layer of Mod Podge on your wood slice to seal it and make sure that you include the back. And I did go around the edges as well. This will last as a timeless treasure. It's smooth, it will resist water and last forever and not change. Now let's go back to our Scarecrow's hat and finish it up. There is nothing like some beautiful ribbon to trim out the brim and really truly make this a Scarecrow's floppy burlap hat. I wrapped some dew twine around there and tied it and that is looking pretty spiffy. So we have our fringed edge and we've made it a little more floppy. Cut the center of your ribbon spool out. This will let it rest upon your wood slice scarecrow much better and fit better and you can get more of a flop and style out that hat really, really good. So now it's looking pretty spiffy. We need to give it some corn husk or some raffe. I have the tiki skirt from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna make it work by gluing it on the bottom side. And you'll just kind of model him and keep going back and forth until you've gotten enough on there to suit you. And as I work with my tiki skirt, I'm allowing probably a good three and a half inches over the edge of maybe three inches over the edge and then I just glue a little more and lay it down and then cut it until I was content and any of the longer pieces I just trimmed off but don't do too much before you style it and shape it and make sure it is exactly as full as you like and desire before you attach him once you attach him to your scarecrow go through there and kind of like Press on them and roll them up and mash them so they will relax and fit more contour around your scarecrow and give it that really roughed, rugged look of the rustic feel that we're going for. 
So these sunflowers were at Dollar Tree, and I picked up the small and large. I grabbed me some of the maple leaves and the burlap green and orange, put my sunflower on there, and added a few more maple leaves for detail. The more you added to your scarecrow's hat, the more he will look very handsome. And you can make this into a girl scarecrow as well. As I said, this will be a timeless treasure. I took me a piece of fabric and I scruffied it up and frayed it just a bit to make a shift in the patch. And therefore, I attached that fabric. To put detail to it to make it look stitched, I grabbed my black paint marker and I drew stitches onto the patch as though there were thread stitches there. This is something you can add detail by actually a needle and thread. And voila, here he is, extremely handsome, looking gorgeous. I know you're gonna enjoy making the wood slice scarecrow along with the wood slice scarecrow hat. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you enjoy videos like this, do hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Until the next paint along, this is Elizabeth, and I'll be crafting y'all. Bye.